My name's Will Travers. I'm the Chief Executive and President of the Born Free Foundation. And for me, the Born Free story is a very personal family story that started 50 years ago, more than 50 years ago, when my mum and dad, Virginia McKenna and Bill Travers, travelled to Kenya with the family, um, where we lived for a whole year, while the film Born Free was made. And they were the actor and actress who starred in that film, playing the roles of George and Joy Adamson. And as you, you probably know, the film centred around George and Joy's efforts to return Elsa, an orphaned lioness, back to the wild. Something that had never been done before and, and most people said could never be done. But it was successful and Joy wrote books about it and those books became a film and thankfully the story of Elsa, the story of Born Free, is now something that tens of millions of people around the world have seen. In fact, President Barack Obama recalls it as being the very first film that he ever saw and he remembers crying at the age of four when he saw it. So Born Free got into our blood way back into the in the 1960s, but it wasn't because of a lion that Born Free, the charity, started. It was because of an elephant. Uh, Mum and Dad made a film subsequent to Born Free featuring an elephant called Poli Poli, which means slowly, slowly in Swahili. And after filming was over, the government of Kenya gave that little elephant to the London Zoo. And although mum and dad said, look, could we possibly have her and return her to the wild, uh, the government said, you can, but we'd have to catch another baby elephant. So best to let sleeping dogs lie. And Poli Poli went to London Zoo, where in the early 1980s, it was revealed that she was psychologically distressed, she'd broken both her tusks, she had no companion animals, and she'd become, in the zoo's words, difficult to manage. So mum and I went to see her for the first time in over a decade and called her name, and she came racing down from the back of, of the elephant enclosure at London Zoo and stretched out her trunk to touch my dad's hand, which for me is symbolic of the Elephant Never Forgets story. They then campaigned to have her return to Africa, and the zoo's said no, but that they would move her to Whipsnade, which is the, the country park part of the London Zoo, where there were at least other elephants. Sadly, the move failed. She damaged a leg and she was subsequently destroyed, to cut a long story short. She died in the Elephant House at London Zoo in 1983. And we'd had masses of letters from members of the public saying, what's going on with Poli Poli? What's going on in zoos? How can this be possible that a, a juvenile female elephant who should be with her family in the wild ends up dying alone in a zoo in, in Great Britain? And uh, we sat there one night and we said, look, we can either go back to doing what we've been doing up until then. My dad was making documentary films, my mum was doing a lot of acting, and I was doing film distribution. Or we could set up a little charity, a little organisation to try and explore what was going on specifically with animals in zoos. And that's how Zoo Check, as it was originally called, was formed. But it became very clear after a few years of Zoo Check that there was another side to the coin. If we were critical of animals being in zoos and circuses and wanted animals to be in the wild, then surely we had to commit ourselves to trying to conserve and protect animals in their natural habitat. And it seemed like ZooCheck was too limiting a name. So we renamed ourselves, rebranded ourselves, the Born Free Foundation, which actually is much more appropriate, I think, and resonates so much more with both our history and our present and our future. People are always asking me, what can I do to help Born Free? And of course, I send them to our website. I say, adopt an animal or join the foundation. But what happens if you're just going out for dinner with friends? Well, if you use charitable bookings, you can contribute to Born Free at no cost to you. It's easy. It's perfect. It's exactly the kind of thing that any responsible diner would want to do. You go out to dinner, you have your meal, and at the end of the meal, you choose the charity that you'd like the money to go to, and the restaurant will make a donation of one pound for every diner in your party. What could be easier than that? Food for thought? No. Food for wildlife? Perfect.